Hi guys and welcome to today's video. My name is Melissa Joyce. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today we are going to be doing a first impressions, which is not what I usually do on this channel, but we're going to be talking about this Bare Minerals Perfecting Face weird little brush with a little reservoir in it that we, or at least I, received in my September BoxyCharm subscription. So I have never used any kind of brush like this, uh, so I thought let's try it out together on camera and see what we think. I'm going to talk not really at all about Bare Minerals for a number of reasons. The first is that I have reviewed Bare Minerals before. I'll put a link to that review down below in the description bar so you can go and see where I talk a little bit more about the company. Um, also just because there's not a lot to say, uh, but I will talk a little bit about this brush because not only have I gone and researched it on their site, I have watched videos, I have tried to figure out everything I can about the best way to use this, uh, and then we'll go ahead and put it on my face and I will give you my first impression thoughts. I'll put timestamps to all of this down below in the description bar so you can skip ahead to whatever part is of most interest to you. So let's talk a little bit about Bare Minerals. Bare Minerals as a company has been around for over 35 years. They originated in San Francisco. They have an entire range of makeup products and also many different brushes. If you uh, wonder what their theme is, they use nourishing, skin-loving minerals for all of their products. Liquid foundation is actually relatively new for them, uh, which is what this brush is made to be used with, because they really are about like mineral foundations. But they had a little video explaining about how some people will just always want to use a liquid foundation, and they want to make sure that they were providing good, skin-loving, foundation for those folks who wouldn't use a powder foundation. Now let's start talking about this brush in particular and let me just get this up close for you so you can see it is a foundation face brush but it has this, hopefully you can see it, sort of well in the middle of it. And this was put out to work with their Bare Minerals Liquid Bare Skin Foundation. Uh, so they very specifically talk about this being made for that foundation. I do not have that foundation, but I did a little bit more research into what that foundation is so that I can use something that is as close an approximation as I can get. So this is a liquid makeup brush. They talk a number of times about it being patented, which I guess is supposed to show how unique this is. And it does seem like since they made this, they made a couple of other brushes that also have this well in it. But I feel like I've also seen this for other products, like maybe for Pure. I've seen them have another kind of brush with a well in it. I feel like this is not the only company that does this, although they may have been the first. If you live in the US and you want to buy this, it is going to cost you $28. That is the price that was listed on their website. If you want to buy this through Sephora Canada for my fellow Canadians, it is going to be $35 Canadian for this brush. So it's not a cheap brush, so let's hope it's a good brush. They have two claims on this that make it different from your regular foundation brush. The first is that it is super convenient because you can take your foundation and instead of squeezing it onto your hand or onto a palette, especially with those kinds of foundations that are, well, any kind really, I mean, unless you're spraying it on your face, droppers or pumps or squeezy tubes, you also always sort of need to put it somewhere else. You know, it's hard to put it directly on your face. So what they're saying is you take your foundation, you put it directly into here and then onto your face and it holds the makeup for you as you dispense it. Um, so it says that that makes it super convenient. They say that you can adjust it to the drop, I guess, by how many drops you put into here. That doesn't seem like it's going to be unique to this brush, but that's what they claim. They also claim that this is good for cocktailing, which means that if you like to mix in a moisturizer or a serum with your foundation as you apply it, you can put drop both of those into here and then it will mix it on your face for you to make it more convenient in that way. I'm going to test it with my Ordinary Serum Foundation, and the reason that I'm doing that is the foundation, the Bare Minerals one, the Bare Skin Liquid Foundation. They describe on their website as being an ultra thin serum foundation. And this is also a very watery serum foundation. So I thought this might give the best approximation of what this brush was made for. I do notice on Bare Minerals website now and sort of seeing people getting PR, they have a new liquid foundation and this is not the kind of brush that they're sending out with it. It's more of a flat brush. Um, so this seems to be very much for that bare skin foundation. In addition to doing part of my face with this, I also brought over a serum that I have so that I can try mixing a serum and a foundation in this brush to see how it applies. 
So the instructions for this are to shake the foundation, dispense one or two drops into here, and then to use it in a circular buffing motion. Interestingly, they do say to start from the outside of your face inwards, which is not what I usually do because usually if the center of your face has slightly higher coverage and then you lighten it up as you go out, in my experience, it gives you more of a look of being flawless while also quite blended. I am less likely to start my foundation out here because then you sort of need to keep the coverage up over your entire face. But that's just me. I'm going to zoom you in and then let's get started. So we are close up and I do have some interesting blemishes that have popped up in the last couple of days to cover. So let's try covering this side of my face just directly, not mixing any serum in, because this is a side where I feel I need a little bit more coverage. I feel like this is going to disappear right into here. Yep, it just sunk right in. I feel like I'm getting no product. That product all just sunk directly into, like, look at that. Like, I'm pressing really hard and no product is coming off the brush. It's all just sunk directly into the bottom of the bristles. Good thing this is a cheap foundation and I don't worry about losing it. Like, it's all just sinking in. Okay, let's get it on my face before it sinks in. Well, now I feel like I've gotten a lot. I'm starting from the outside, I'm buffing. I don't feel like I'm getting a great amount of control over this because I feel like I have to press hard to get the foundation out from the bristles where it's sunk in, but that means that I'm leaving streaks. Also, this is a relatively flimsy brush. Like, if I want product, I have to like press to get the product out and then try to buff and blend. I mean, I guess that looks okay, but I feel like I got lighter coverage than usual with more product because so much of it sunk into that brush and there's a hair coming out. I mean, it's okay. Now I did bring a thicker foundation, which is my Milk Blur Liquid Foundation. I thought I would use that to mix with the serum, but I think I might do a couple tests here. I'm also gonna try using this because it is thicker and probably won't sink as far into the brush. See, and I feel like when I pull the bristles out now, I can see all the foundation down there at the bottom. But let's try a little bit of this, maybe just like on my forehead up here, um, to see if a thicker foundation works a little bit better. And I'm just shaking this up right now. Because if this is supposed to be convenient and you can mix things in here, I don't feel like you should have to do it super quick to get it to work. See, that one is sitting on top of the bristles a little bit more. I feel like this is actually gonna be a lot for just my forehead. <laughs> yeah. I'll also do down here. So now what we're gonna do just for this last patch of my face is use a little bit of the milk foundation and then add a little bit of serum to it. So, so we're doing the cocktailing like they said. Here we go, tiny little drop of foundation. And I'm just using this Aloe Pure uh, Time Repair Serum. So. I actually just put that right on top of the foundation because otherwise I'm afraid the serum's gonna just disappear into the brush. So let's see if this mixes it well. I mean, I guess it worked. <laughs> so my foundation is on and 
like it does look like it's finely blended. It looks it looks fine. It just I feel like it took a little bit of work to get there and this wasn't the convenience factor that they said it was. What I'm going to do is go put on the rest of my makeup and then I'll be back here to give you my final thoughts. Hey guys, I'm back with my makeup on and I have my first impressions thoughts on this brush, which is new from me. Uh, I think that my makeup ended up going on fine, like it looked smooth, it didn't look streaky or anything like that, but I just feel like it took more work than it needed to get there and what they were saying were advantages of this brush didn't feel like they ended up being advantages. So if we think through the three different things they say, they say that it's convenient because you can put your foundation right onto here and then blend it onto your face. What I found is that, as you saw, if it was a more liquid foundation, it was disappearing into here and that wasn't convenient because I ended up having to use more product and I really didn't know how much product I needed to put on here and I had to move quickly to get it onto my face. So that is in no way more convenient than having it on your hand or putting it on a palette because then instead of the foundation sort of soaking down into the bristles, you would sort of saturate the bristles with the product just on the very ends of them and then apply it onto your face, going back in as needed. And that also talks to step number two or advantage number two, I should say, where they say that you can get um, coverage to the drop because you know how many drops you're putting on before you put it on your face. I wasn't so sure about that one, but to me, this felt like I really didn't know how much coverage I was gonna get because I didn't know how much would sink into the brush. And again, if you have a palette, you can just kind of keep going into it and build it up as needed. So I don't see why that's an advantage. And for advantage number three about being able to cocktail the mixtures directly into the brush, yes, I guess you can, um, but again, I just don't really see why that makes this an, a, an advantage because, again, you had to work to make sure that things weren't sinking into the brush as opposed to, again, putting both the products on your hand or on a palette and mixing them up. So in the end, I did feel like this blended everything okay, but I think it would have done the same job, if not better, if it was just a plain flat top brush without the well in it so that you had a wider blending surface that you would just use off of a palette. Um, I did notice that a hair came out of this and when I was looking at Bare Minerals website and usually products websites will keep a pretty close control on the reviews that go up on their website, this only had two and a half stars out of five, which is pretty low for a products website. Um, and when I was going through those reviews, I saw the same things over and over again. All the one stars were because this was shedding like crazy on people. Every time they used it, it brush bristles were ending up on their face. Every time they washed it, bristles were ending up just being pulled out. Now mine just had the one come out and actually as I'm doing this, um, nothing's coming out. So maybe they took care of that quality issue with it. Um, but to me, the advantages of it don't really pan out. And I also feel like, you know, I'm comparing putting foundation onto this versus picking it up with foundation and then thinking about cleaning this brush afterwards. Because as it is now, I feel like foundation has gone right down close to the ferrule as opposed to picking up like this, where I feel like the foundation would really stay close to the end of the brush and make it easier to clean between uses. Um, so this is a first impression, and I would like to say as I keep using this that I will let you know if I think any differently. I just don't know if I'm gonna keep using this. I think I will try, at least try using it in different ways, like with the back of my hand and see, but I'm not usually a brush application person. And the one brush that I really like are those you know, flat oval brushes where it's really densely packed and flat and just smooth everything out over my face. This spends a lot of time buffing where I feel that for me at least, a sponge does a better application. So I'm going to try to force myself to keep using this and I will put any updates down below in the description bar if I find I change my opinion of it in any way. But as it is right now, I think that these well type foundation brushes are a bit of a gimmick and I would save your money on it, especially considering that this is not the most expensive brush, but it's also not like a real techniques brush or an elf brush either. You know, you're paying quite a bit for this. So if I was going to be investing in a foundation brush, I would go for a tried and true one, a sort of packed flat top brush 
or you know angled brush one of those other ones that are more they've been used for longer and they do the same things as this but without this weird well in here so i hope you enjoyed this review uh, as i said first impressions aren't usually what i do but i thought that this warranted it today so we could see together how it worked have you tried this in your boxycharm box or have you tried one of these like well type brushes before i'd be really curious to hear your experience with it leave a comment for me down below i do respond to every comment that i get it sometimes takes me a day or so, but I do respond to every comment that I get because I really appreciate having conversations, getting comments. If you enjoyed this, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you have not yet subscribed, you can click on my face, which I will make pop up right here. And if you wanna watch one of my other reviews, I will put one up right here. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye.